Well, it's different from the different governments. I mean, the United States, for example, doesn't need nuclear weapons. I mean, if, if you're looking at the idea of what they're there for, which is to deter another country from attacking by having, you know, a strong physical force, the United States has got the, the biggest armies, the biggest military, the biggest capacity for force projection and, and use of force of any country. So for deterrence, if, if there is a role for nuclear weapons and deterrence, then it's not the big countries that need them, it would be the little countries that don't have strong military. Yeah, so the US is a big country, it's a huge military, it could easily get rid of its nuclear weapons tomorrow if it, if it felt like it. So that's not the reason that they're holding on to them. I mean, they're holding on to them because it gives them another powerful position, it's another tool to add to their quiver of power. Okay. Um, so in that respect, you have to like convince them that they will be better off um, in terms of their relationships with other countries if they're non-nuclear. Okay. Um, and there, you know, like better trade, you know, better relations, interrelations with other countries. Um, and you could actually see them as a security maximizer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I think a number of them already realize that. Yeah. You know? Uh, and so you have some of the candidates, for example, a president saying they will lead initiatives for a nuclear weapons free world. Uh, where are the forces that are stopping them? Well, it's those who have a vested interest in the nuclear weapons. So these are the scientists who are designing the weapons and modernizing them, and uh, the corporations that are making them. So those are the, that's the area in the United States, for example, where there needs to be effort. There needs to be effort to isolate the corporations that are making nuclear weapons mm -hmm. and stop funding them. And that's not just happened by the United States. I mean, these corporations are actually on the stock market yeah. um, and individual investors are investing in them. Yeah. Other countries have their um, uh, uh, funds, mm -hmm. for example, a pension fund, you know, government funds where they are investing in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And many of them are investing in these corporations mm -hmm. that are making nuclear weapons. Um, and the reason they're attractive is because the subsidized corporations from the US, you know, they can make a lot of money from a small amount of investment, sort of thing. Yeah. So um, Norway has already done that. Okay. Norway, between 2004 and 2006, their pension fund divested from Lockheed Martin, McDonnell Douglas, you know, the big companies that are making uh, nuclear weapons. Um, we're looking for other countries to follow. Okay. That would help with the United States. Now, with other countries, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. you know, if, for example, you're looking at India, mm -hmm. you know, India tested nuclear weapons and then Pakistan followed suit. Mm -hmm. Well, India did it because they saw they were going for a Security Council seat and nobody was paying them any attention. Yeah. You know, they said, how come? It's only like Northern Hemisphere countries, basically, you know, and you know, the West plus China you know, have got permanent seats on the Security Council. What about a big country like India? Mm. Don't we deserve one? Nobody's paying them any attention. They go, what gives these countries, you know, their special position? Well, they're the ones who've got nuclear weapons. Well, maybe we will test them. People take us a bit more seriously. Mm. That was one reason. Another so status was driving status, that. Status. Yeah. And another reason was that um, the nuclear weapon states had not kept their agreement under the Non-Proliferation Treaty to eliminate nuclear weapons. India had sort of stayed outside saying, hey, we're not too sure if this is a good treaty. Then, you know, when it continued to happen, that they didn't implement that, and uh, they, India goes, well, if you guys aren't going to keep you know, your commitments to get rid of nuclear weapons, we'll try and join the club, yeah. which is what they did. Yeah. So for India, you would need to look at changing the Security Council. Mm -hmm. you know, it's an anachronism that the five nuclear weapon states, the official ones, are the, have got veto power in the Security Council. They are the mm -hmm. five permanent. So if the that should be you know, other nuclear weapon states actually put, had some yeah. positive initiatives that they were committed to disarmament, then you could get India to join in. Mm -hmm. And India and Pakistan and North Korea um, and also China have already agreed to the idea of negotiations for a nuclear weapons convention. Okay. So if the other got countries, the other nuclear weapons states agree to that, it won't be hard bringing them on. Mm -hmm. So for, as you see, for, the, for each country it's a little different. Mm -hmm. I've just talked about India and the United States. Yeah. Israel, it's more part of the peace process there. In terms yeah. of 